guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is having a bit of a red day. Now, keep in mind, the traditional markets are also having a red day. In fact, the S&P right here is having one of its largest red candle mornings, uh, pretty much the biggest one that we've seen on the daily since about November 18th in last month. So what does this mean for the world right now? Why is this happening? Well, Bitcoin did actually have a bit of a bounce right here, right around the $21,900 level. So is this a dead cat bounce? Should you be worried? And why did it actually happen? Well, just to point out, we did have Bitcoin seeing the biggest weekly candle ever, which was incredible at $4,319. And I did, in fact, warn you guys about the Binance funding overtaking the Deribit funding, and this could potentially be the retail FOMO peak, right? So is this the top? Is it the time for the correction? And what actually caused it? Well, obviously, Elon Musk jinxed it with his Bitcoin tweets. Well, no, that's not really it, guys, but we are going to talk about what caused it, what's happening, what to expect, and also major, major security situation for anyone that has Ledger Nano S's. This is probably a lot of people in crypto, actually any Ledger products, to be honest. We're going to discuss the data breach, what it means, should you be worried, and what could potentially happen in the future moving forward. So all that in today's video, if that sounds good to you, definitely get subscribed if you haven't, and let's dive directly into the chart. So you can see right here, have Having a bloody Monday over on the S&P. Now, Bitcoin did take a dip. Incredibly, though, we actually bounced, and this is what actually keeps me remaining bullish short term, is the fact that we bounced directly off of this previous resistance. Look, this is the resistance that was holding us right here in this channel. When we finally broke through it, we blasted off, and look at this, guys. We came back down, and we perfectly bounced off of it. And these are the things that you love to see. You love to see previous resistance flipping into support, right? And that's the thing with these bull markets, right? No amount of bad news that comes out can keep the price down. Whereas in a bear market, no amount of bad, uh, good news can keep the price from falling, right? And with the recent FUD we had coming out, we also have something going on in the UK right now with the pandemic that has created a bit of a scare that could have potentially affected the stocks and Bitcoin as well. But as you can see right here, we are still in the ascending broadening wedge. We did have two tests at the top. This could potentially mean that maybe there is a little bit of exhaustion, right? We are expecting a correction at some point. However, like I said, we probably won't see Bitcoin go below 20K. And if we do, I doubt it will stay there for very long. Obviously, things could change. I'm not a crystal ball reader, but having a look at the way the chart is looking right now, it does continue to look bullish. Now, having a look at where we could have that pullback, well, obviously, we talk about retesting pre previous resistances as support. Well, probably the most incredible resistance we had right here was around the 19,100, 19,700, right? So you can see we danced in this area for quite some time. Once we finally broke through, we absolutely skyrocketed, but there is a potential of retesting down to these levels. I would anticipate a bounce as we have seen. Now, currently, on the super, super low time frame, 30 minute chart. Now keep in mind, this is a very, very low time frame, but I know people want to know what's going to happen in the next four hours, right? Well, having a look right here, we are having again, a little bit resistance at this very critical level. It's around 20, uh, 23,000, roughly 23,200. And you can see right here, obviously this was acting as major resistance right here. Then we did bounce as support several times. We had the dip and now it's acting again as the resistance. So I would like to see us get above the $23,200 level, close above that on the daily. However, this is a very, very low time frame chart. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. So what is causing the dip? Why is this happening? Well, interestingly enough, one thing is that we had the US dollar, which typically trades inversely to Bitcoin, attempting to rebound. Now, they say that it rose 0.78% as the demand in Europe surged after the UK imposed fresh pandemic restrictions. Now, it appears that there is apparently some new form of the virus strain that they're saying is 70% more transmittable than the previous strain. 
not to get all conspiracy theory, but like, didn't we kind of expect this, right? Like the, the you know, the, the vaccine comes out and then, oh no, it mutated, right? I mean, come on, like whatever. But anyway, in all sincerity, it's a thing, it's out there, it's happening. So, but they are saying that this new virus isn't resistant to the vaccine, whatever. So, I mean, whatever. But nevertheless, I think that that probably shook up the markets on Monday just a little bit. But keep in mind, guys, overall, we do have the US dollar index down almost 12% from its mid-March top. And in the same period, Bitcoin is up 487%. So you got to take it with a grain of salt, but realistically, take a step back, look at the big picture. Not a big deal, guys. These are the dips and the dips are for buying, right? Could we get another dip? Absolutely. We're going to get multiple 10, 15, 20, 30% dips in this bull trend. That is what you expect in a bull market. But one other factor, a little bit of a mini black swan event that may have thrown a wrench in the gears, is this ledger data breach. Now, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I am very disappointed. Um, I personally don't understand why Ledger would keep everything in a centralized database for this long. Um, you know, the responsible thing to do would be to maybe keep it in the database just long enough in case customers had issues or needed to respond to certain tickets, say a month or two, maybe three months at max or something like that, and then wipe the database. So what does this mean for you as an individual? Well, there's a few things I want to go over. Number one, your funds are safe. That is the good thing. The good thing about the way that ledgers are designed is that the private key is physically on the device. Ledger does not know your private key. There are no centralized databases with your private key. Your money is safe. However, what is not safe is your privacy. And what just happened is a lot of emails, phone numbers, and physical addresses actually got leaked. In fact, here's one Redditor that pointed out he got an email uh, that was saying that I, it says, I'm aware of your cryptocurrency holdings. They named the city, the address. They said they're offering you five, uh, you need to pay me five, $500, send it to this address. If you don't, I'm going to show up with a wrench against your face or raid your house when you're not home. So please be careful about this, guys. There's, uh, it has been, there may be some people trying to take advantage of this. So how do you know if your name is actually on the list? Well, the easiest place to go, you can actually just go over to have I been pwned or pawned, whatever you want to say, dot com. Enter your email address right here. And you can see right here, actually, look at this. Ledger is on the top. Over 1 million Ledger accounts have been released. So as I said, guys, your, your, your private keys are safe. Do not give your 24-word phrase out to anyone. Unfortunately, this is very bad for Ledger. This let a lot of people down, including myself. And um, But the most important thing, listen, moving forward, the most important thing, guys, is that you do not give your 24-word seed phrase away to anyone. Ledger is not going to ask you for that. There's ongoing phishing campaigns. Some of them may even look like Ledger. They may come across that they're Ledger, right? So make sure that it is from something officially Ledger. They have, you know, .fr, ledger.com, ledgerwallet.com, ledger.zendesk.com. Please double check the addresses. There's going to be a lot of, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of phishing attempts. They're going to try to be scamming people. Do not fall for these tricks. So moving forward, uh, yeah, that's pretty... Pretty upsetting that that happened. Um, now, here's an interesting thing, right? So so in one hand, you have the ledger dump happening, but then on the other hand, you have the US coming out trying to push these laws to get everybody KYC'd and associate names with wallets, right? Kind of now that you see what happens when you can associate your names with accounts and put them in large databases, this is obviously a problem. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know everything about, you know, internet security, but I do want to point out that Andreas Antonopoulos, who is one of the most respected uh, crypto influencers essentially in the space, he is going to do a live stream called Help Ledger Cryptocurrency Hardware Wallet Database Hack. This is happening at 3 p.m. Eastern time today. Um, you know, if you missed the live stream, go check out uh, Andreas Antonopoulos' channel. Get subscribed, okay? I, I'm sure he's going to have a lot more information about this than you. Now, moving forward, what does this mean? Am I going to stop using Ledger? No, I think Ledger is a great product personally. However, I am very let down and I'm very disappointed of this. This is is not cool. You know, you've seen a lot of physical attacks, right? People now knowing their addresses. They know people holding crypto. Some of them, if they can associate certain names with people, they know that you could have money, right? And this is kind of scary, guys, right? So one product, honestly, that I have had my eyes on, I'm literally just waiting for it to come out, is the Engrave Zero. This is a wallet that's totally air gap. Now, keep in mind, it's not even out yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, when this wallet does come out, I, I may... 
I may become an Engrave fan and I may shift from the Ledger Nano. Up until now, I have found Ledger Nano's wallet and security of their wallets to be completely unmatched. However, this is centralized databases. This is something outside of blockchains, outside of private keys. And unfortunately, this is exactly why we push for decentralization, which is to get away from these centralized databases. So Engrave Zero Wallet is something I'm gonna be looking at. But like I, like I said, guys, the most important thing is you do not fall for these phishing scams. You do not give away your 24 uh, word seed phrase. And yeah, I mean, as far as physical addresses and things like that, there's really nothing anybody can do about that, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, you know, in the future, there are steps you can take, measures you can take. You can have a burner phone, right? Two separate numbers. You can get a P.O. box. You can start using P.O. boxes, right? You know, those are all things you might want to look into. Um, but yeah, this is really unfortunate. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think it compromises as far as Ledger devices themselves. I still think Ledger devices are amazing. I, you know, I, I, I do like them, but I am going to be looking for these other guys like Engrave in the future moving forward. So Let's talk about, now that is, I had to talk about that. Just be safe out there, guys. Like, there's nothing you can do if your, you know, information got leaked. That's on Ledger. Shame on them. Unacceptable. But as far as your money is concerned, as long as you personally don't give your keys away, your money and your funds are safe. So that's like the biggest takeaway. Now, talking about open interest in futures products has now officially hit an all-time high of $1.47 billion. The figure is 42% higher from just a week ago when it was only around $1.3 billion. So this still shows that there is massive institutional interest and traders are expecting near-term Bitcoin volatility. Does this mean that they're expecting an all-time, uh, another all-time high? Possibly, guys. We do know how these cycles move, but you know what? As I say, buy the dip. And you know who just bought an incredible dip? You guessed it. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 29,646 Bitcoins for $650 million at an average price, and here's the kicker, of $21,925. So these guys are buying $650 million of Bitcoin at a roughly $22,000 average price. So they're basically buying at the all-time high, right? Um, so now it says that this they have a total of 70,470 bitcoins. My god, 1.125 billion. That is absolutely incredible. This is literally Bitcoin whales on a complete other level and of course Peter Schiff says congratulations to the Bitcoin whales. You just made uh, you, that you just made very rich by allowing them to unload their Bitcoin. Um, Peter really has a hard time admitting that he's wrong. He's been wrong. He is wrong. Um, you know, he talks about the greater fool. He is, in fact, the greater fool. And interestingly enough, getting back to Elon Musk, you know, Michael Saylor actually said if you want to uh, add sh – what is he If you want to do your shareholders a $100 billion favor, convert your Tesla balance sheet from USD to BTC. Other firms on the S&P would follow your lead, and in time it would grow to become the $1 trillion favor. And look at this. He actually responded and asked, are such large transactions even possible? In which he goes on to yes, explains it. And then other people down here, um, SBF Alameda says, yep. Uh, they talk about OTC desks. Our team at CoinShares would be happy to help you. So this is looking pretty incredible. Um, uh, Tesla's, you know, Tesla looks like they could be potentially getting involved in uh, cryptocurrency and you might even see more of these publicly traded companies adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. And just to end on a bit of a positive note, we do have JP Morgan who used to be one of the biggest Bitcoin bears, now saying that they consider that Bitcoin could eventually hit $650,000 if its market cap becomes that of gold. JP Morgan released a report in which they explained that Bitcoin and gold have been the main beneficiaries of the pandemic, the, the investment bank considers that it has been absolutely remarkable the way in which Bitcoin expanded this year. While other assets have large market caps above trillions, Bitcoin is still valued at only 0.44 of a trillion dollars. JP Morgan explained that the price of Bitcoin will not get there tomorrow. However, considering that there is large institutional adoption all over the world, it might get there sooner rather than later. And on that note, this is a little awkward. We have to give away a Ledger Nano S. Maybe we'll start giving away engraves when they come out, guys. So we do have some videos from last week. We do have to generate this. That was video number four. So we have video one, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, that was the all-time high video. Uh, all-time high video. That was a great day. That was a very monumental day for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So let's uh, get the comments for this video and <laughs> give away 
a ledger. Man, this just feels so awkward. On, on Why did it have to happen on a Monday? But that is what we do, guys. So we're going to give away the ledger, which is still a perfectly safe. Man, lots of comments. Oh, my goodness. 880. So uh, let's give away a random comment to a winner. Yay. With a with a slice of cake. L Rhymes, you are the winner. <laughs> if you want a ledger, if you want a ledger, I understand after the hack. If you don't, like I said, guys, it's not the device. It's the database with the names. They screwed up. They put it in a centralized database. But you are the winner, L Rhymes. You know where to hit me up. Definitely not in the comment section. Way too many scammers down there. Be safe out there, guys. Enjoy the dip. If you bought the dip, congratulations. That is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. Sorry about the banging. If you can hear the banging in the background, there's some construction going on. Nothing I can do about it, guys. It's going on all day. I'm trying to make this video. There's nothing I can do. If if you heard it in the background, I'm sorry. Hopefully they'll be gone tomorrow. But um, so that's it for me today, guys. You rock. My name's K Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.